shout out to Carla Morrow, 1979, and Leslie Gibran. Thank you very much for subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for regular uploads and your chance to be included in shout outs for future videos. And also a special thanks to Kathy A. Um, some very important uh, areas and topics were covered today because of some of the questions she asked in last week's video in the description. So thank you very much, Kathy. And also thanks to everybody that um, uh, engages in my videos and want to ask questions and uh, people answer whether they want you know certain videos or not. So thanks to everybody for commenting. I really appreciate it. Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video and good morning. Well, it's good morning for me. So um, I don't know exactly you know what time it is for you but hello <laughs> um gotta forgive the beard i still haven't shaved but you know that's what happens sometimes i just um don't get around to it so. uh well so anyway um today's gonna be a fairly well i wouldn't say long video well it might be long you know we say i'll try and keep it short and then ends up being like 20 minutes half an hour but um today will be a video regarding uh, citric acid and um, let me just see if I can reach right there we go so um, these are my dish and laundry bars and um, they're 100% coconut oil which is my absolute favorite to use when um, washing dishes and cleaning up bench tops and surfaces and stuff I just absolutely love it and um, as you know I um, have done I like a few videos in the past now, uh, more recently where I've been talking about hard water and um, the issues I've been having with soap scum. And I thought today I will do a video on what citric acid is and what it does in soap and how it behaves with lye and also how effective it is in uh, combating soap scum. Right, so I've mentioned that I was going to do a, because I make private label soaps, I just got a few private labels, like pretty small, because I wouldn't be able to take on too much, uh, quantity wise. Um, so if it's like generally small private label requests that aren't too difficult to kind of do and um, won't take away from my time from, you know, like making videos on YouTube and of course um, supplying to stores and all the other stuff that I do, um, I thought that I would do video, today's video with some private label uh, soaps of coffee with a coffee fragrance oil. But I thought, no, I'm going to actually do another dish and laundry bar. I mean, you've seen me make this already, but um, obviously without the citric acid. And I need to make more anyway. So I thought, oh, yeah, okay. Um, I thought I'll just cover, you know, the dish and laundry uh, bars, 100% coconut oil, and I will show you also um, how that adding citric acid to soap actually really slows down trace, um, especially like for, you know, 100% coconut oil, it really, really slows it down considerably, but that's okay. It's, it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with um, what you're doing or anything on the recipe just means you just have to stick blend for a few minutes extra, but well worth it in the end. And when you, uh, when it comes to actually combating soap scum, because it's extremely effective in doing so. Right. So generally the usage rates between, uh, for citric acid in cold process soap is between one and 3%. Uh, generally you use like one, if you don't have too much hard water, so it's just a tiny bit, like, you know, you get a little bit of soap scum issues, and obviously 2 and 3% for severe um, or really, you know, really bad uh, soap scum issues like how I've been having. Um, so generally you'd, for cleaning, I, I always, I would recommend 3%, and that's okay. I will um, go through like how with you i will do a tutorial on the computer and i'll record the screen and we'll go through on how to um incorporate and how to calculate how much citric acid is needed and how much extra lye is needed because um citric acid will consume some of the lye and of the reaction will create sodium citrate which, which is a chelating uh chemical and um 
we we want to know how much extra lie because then obviously the super fat will go above what you are intending. So if you for dish and laundry, I'll go zero. So if you're wanting to add um, citric acid, you're going to have to add the extra lie to keep it at zero super fat. Otherwise, it will probably go to between three and five percent super fat, which is not what you really want for cleaning bars. So what is sodium citrate? So what sodium, how sodium citrate behaves is um, it actually binds with heavy metals and heavy minerals and um, it binds to it and it actually washes off uh, from surfaces. So whether it's our skin, whether it's we're washing, you know, dishes or um, surfaces or whatever, using soap in, even in the shower, it will build up and you'll see a soap scum, that, that gooeyness. And also you might see a white film or just a clear film as well, depending on how hard your water is. The harder your water is, generally it will... It won't be as transparent. It'll be like quite like like a soft brown, like a greeny brown color, and it can easily sometimes be mistaken for mold, but it's not mold. It's just soap scum. So it's all the um, excess oils and heavy metals and all the impurities in our water um, that attach to uh, like with with soap. I mean, it attaches to all these heavy minerals and it can build up. So what sodium citrate does is it binds to it and it creates, I guess it kind of makes it more water soluble in a, in a sense where it actually doesn't stick to surfaces, just washes away. So that's why you won't see any um, soap scum build up when using citric acid or sodium citrate. I will call it sodium citrate from now because it's not citric acid anymore. Once you introduce it to lye, it actually changes into something else, which is sodium citrate. There are many benefits in adding uh, sodium citrate or having sodium citrate in your soap. One, of course, sodium uh, soap scum. If not eliminate, it will greatly reduce your soap scum uh, issues that you are having. It can also, if you're having hard water and you wash with soap, uh, it can leave this oily feeling on your skin after the shower and it feels like you haven't washed the soap off properly. It's actually got nothing to do with the soap. The soap that you are making or using is 100% fine. It's the actual water. And it's not the water that you're using in your recipe. So even if you use distilled water, like how I use in my soaps, and most soapers generally do use distilled water, it makes no difference whether you're using distilled water in your actual recipe. It's the water that you are introducing the bar to the finished product to. So whether you're washing dishes or you're washing your body, that's the water that creates soap scum. If it's hard water, when introduced with this soap, it will build up soap scum and um, that oily residue, whether on surfaces or your skin. So it's actually got nothing to do with the water in your recipe. And it's not anything you're doing wrong. It's purely the water, unfortunately, that you just have uh, in the piping and uh, coming into a house. So it's out of, it's an external thing to a soap maker. Some areas in Sydney don't have hard water at all. And some areas do, like my area or, or my sister's area. She lives about uh, 15, 20 k's away. And her her water is more harder than my water here. So it also depends on your local area and how old the piping is in, in your area as well. So all these things um, can contribute to hard water. Right, so sodium lactate. I know I had a viewer asking the difference between sodium lactate and um, uh, sodium citrate or, you know, citric acid. And sodium lactate is a liquid salt. It's um, f fermentation of... Uh, plant source materials, generally um, beetroot and corn deriv derivatives. It's usually fermented from those types of um, those plant source materials. And um, it helps unmold the soap quicker. So when you add it to your, to your recipe, you find that it's easier to kind of unmold from the soap. And it also makes it shrink just a little bit, kind of like when you're working with pillar wax, you know, soy wax or, you know, paraffin wax, and you're using a special pillar wax that when you pour it into the vessel, it shrinks. So then you can just literally just slides out. So it kind of behaves the same way, sodium lactate. Sodium lactate also is a homunctin like glycerin. I wouldn't say it's as powerful as glycerin. 
um, but it definitely is a hematunt and it draws moisture into the skin. It uh, boosts lava in cold process soap. And there's a lot of debate whether sodium lactate actually uh, increases longevity in your soap bars. And I just have to purely go by experience. Personally, I do feel it does um, contribute to longevity. It seems to make the bar last longer, like overall, because I was not using uh, sodium lactate at all when I first started making soap. I actually started adding salt, and I did notice a big difference. But then when I also coupled salt with sodium lactate, I just really noticed a massive difference in how long my bars last. So definitely it does, I find, I mean, I just go by experience and kind of like what I feel and I do feel like it increased longevity. So I'd like to say um, a big thanks to Kathy A because she mentioned what uh, contributed to hard water. Was it the actual water that you use in your recipe or is it the water that's external to your bar? Like obviously the water that's coming out of the tap and most definitely is the water coming out of your tap. It's got nothing to do with the water you are using in your recipe, even though I highly recommend you use um, distilled water or you use uh, at least spring water, bottled water. Uh, so, yeah. So, there are other positive aspects to adding sodium citrate. So, generally, full body use, stick 2%, I find, is really good. I've been using 2%. It's been fantastic. For cleaning, I would say 3%. And the reason why I say 3% for cleaning, especially dishes, and services because there'll be a lot of minerals and a lot of food, you know, particles and all these things on our dishes that can create soap scum when introduced with to soap. So by adding 3% just to combat the bar being introduced to hard water plus, you know, dirt and grime and oils and, you know, all these things from food, so that's why I recommend 3% for actual cleaning bars, whether it's a four bar or also for liquid soap. So I have been adding 3% um, citric acid to my liquid soap still. Um, 2% for body, 3% for cleaning again, because especially with clothes and stuff, like it's, you know, you spill on your clothes, you get your clothes dirty. I'm sure there's excess oils and, you know, external stuff that I introduced to the clothes. So when the when the liquid soap's washing your clothes in the washing machine, if you've got hard water, that's one factor. And if you've got all these external things, you know, like dirt and grime and oil, that's another thing as well. So you really want to make sure that you have enough um, a chela- of a chelating agent in your soap so it doesn't um, build soap scum because it can build soap scum in your washing machine as well. And that's not something that you want. So I thought I'll just cover the re- the benefits of doing A3%. Um, sometimes it can crystallize a little bit, like not like overly over the top. I haven't noticed anything major, just maybe kind of a little bit with adding citric acid at 3%. 2% you don't get that issue, about 3% you might. But considering it's just a plain white bar, it's designed for cleaning. I don't mind. Like if there's a little bit of, you know, crystallization that goes on, I, I don't mind that at all. Um, it's still going to function 100%. It's just like um, glycerin rivers or soda ash. Um, it does not affect the quality of the bar. The bar is still perfectly safe to use. It's just an aesthetics thing. So if you do notice um, in your cleaning products, um, or, you know, just making soap at home to clean with. If you do notice a bit of crystallization at 3%, it's totally fine. Do not panic. You didn't do anything wrong. It's just um, the nature of uh, sodium citrate and how it can behave, especially when um, reacting to moisture in the air and it could draw moisture to it as well because there is glycerin in soap. So that's why crystallization happens as well as glycerin, glycerin rivers. If enough moisture is drawn in from your soap, which is possible, it can create glycerin rivers. So it's just all external things. It just depends on the weather and um, how much carbon dioxide is in the air around the bar and how much moisture is um, around the bar as well. And that's why I highly recommend 
um, having a dehumidifier in the room because it keeps it dry and it minimizes um, soda ash as well over time and um, it minimizes uh, the crystallization effect and obviously um, glycerin dew and um, glycerin rivers that may form later. And yes, soda ash and glycerin dew and glycerin rivers can form well after saponification. I have actually had bars in the past that had no, none of that. And then three, four weeks later, all of a sudden soda ash starts to appear. So um, it can happen later. It generally doesn't happen after the six weeks mark. So if you have no soda ash up to six weeks, after that point, it generally doesn't happen after that. But within the six weeks, absolutely, they can uh, form and um, create, you know, rivers or crystals or, you know, some dew or soda ash. So, again, all that's just totally natural. It's just a natural part of soap making. And um, it's just an aesthetic thing. It just does not affect the soap whatsoever. Right, so... I think I've covered everything uh, theory-wise. Um, I would, I guess, like, if you want to keep your products, you know, natural, then you will, add, like, achelating agent, you know, like sodium citrate, citric acid's the best kind of thing. It's an approved input by organic and natural certifiers. Um, so just like titanium dioxide, that's approved input as well. So... I thought I'll cover titanium dioxide as well, just in that thing, because there's been a lot of talk around citric acid and t titanium dioxide, if they're natural or are they okay to use, are they safe to use, and absolutely they are okay to use and safe to use, and they are approved by all natural and organic certifying bodies. The only thing with titanium dioxide, I know I've mentioned that, if you are to, um, I always recommend the oil, uh, sorry, not the oil, I always recommend the water dispersible one, just mix it outside. Just, you know, get a plastic bottle, you know, 500 mils is plenty, like how you see me use in a couple of my videos, and just um, weigh out your t TD and 1.25 or 1.5 times the weight in water, shake it in, store it in the fridge, perfect. Just put a little marble in it, just so it doesn't clog up in it. You know, when you go to use it, you just shake it really well and it mixes everything nice. And the problem with TD is the fumes, like the, the, the dust, um, can behave a little like asbestos in the lungs. So that's why I just recommend doing it outside. Just don't do it inside. If You can do it inside, but just wear a mask. But just do it outside because it just goes not in your house and, you know, around where you're working and where you're breathing because it could still be in the air. You take your mask off. It still can be, you know, lingering around. So I just recommend just... Do the TD outside. That's what I do. Just like the lye, mixing lye. Um, I weigh the lye inside. I mix it with the water outside. I don't wear a mask because I'm outside, but I just, you know, keep a considerable a distance between me and the pot. And I mix it in and I stir out towards the wind, <laughs> like away from the wind. So if the wind is blowing towards me, I'll stand behind it. If the wind's Blowing left, I'll, you know, move myself around the pot so I don't breathe anything in. So just be mindful of that. Right, so um, I will uh, now, we will go to the uh, computer and I will show you how to use Lycalc. And the reason why I use Lycalc is because it's just so easy to use. The citric acid's there and it tells you how much you need and it tells you how much extra lye you need. And also it depends how much extra lye you need depending on the lye purity and you can adjust the lye purity in lye calc and that's why I, I love lye calc. So let's go ahead onto the computer and I'll show you how to use lye calc. Um, just before we continue along with the uh, lye calc tutorial, I just wanted to give a shout out to Coconut Lux Naturals, formerly um, Coconut Lux Collections on Instagram. As you know, she was the first guest in the Soap Makers Lounge and I just wanted to give a shout out to her because unfortunately her previous account was hacked for ransom and they um, actually requested money um, for them to unlock her account and give her back access. So it was really unfortunate. She lost over 4,200 followers on Instagram and all her videos and all her hard work over the years. So be sure to head on over to her Instagram and refollow her and send her some love and some words of encouragement. 
Right, so now we are on liecalc.com and this is the Lie Calculator. So I'm not going to go too much in how to use it, but I'll, I'll walk you through it um, in case you haven't used it. It's very, very easy. So I'm just going to type in up here on the search oil section, open it. And of course, we're using 76 degrees. And I always use percentages, so let's use percentages. And we're making a two kilo batch today. So let's do 2,000 grams. Lie purity, my lie purity is 99%. So you adjust it whether it's 97, you know, 98 or 99. Oops, not 99, <laughs> 99, 999. And we'll do a 0% super fat. And as you know, 25% water to oil is what I work with. And instead of doing, you know, grams, that's why I click percentages, we're going to be doing 100%. Otherwise, you'll actually have to type in 1,000 grams, or 2,000 grams, actually, because the total weight is 2,000. Right, so we scroll down to grams of coconut oil, of course, 2,000. We need 371.72 grams of 99% purity lie 500 grams of water and then we go down we're going to be doing three percent citric acid so that's 60 grams and three percent of the lie that's required extra lie because 60 grams is going to consume some lie so we need an extra 37.88 grams with the 371.72 grams to make sure it's not lie heavy and it's at zero percent super fat so we'll get out a calculator 371.72 plus 37.88 equals 409.60 so you can just do 409 so we're just going to do 409 grams of lye so that's how much lye is actually needed with the 60 grams of um, citric acid, which we will dissolve in the water phase with the sugar, because I still add sugar to my cleaning bars because it's a lava boosting and uh, it'll help with, um, it does help with conditioning because it's still going to be a very drying bar um, if you use too much of it on the hands. But um, I find it doesn't really dry my hands out because it's not something I'm washing my hands with constantly. So I find it's okay, but I like to still have the sugar because it, um, it adds lather. And I still add 3% white clay because clay is very good at drawing extra oils out. So that's why I still use the clay. So I'm just going to show an example of when you change the light concentration. So let's do 97, because I know 97 is fairly common in, in the States. And uh, so no, we'll, we'll do 99. So 37.88, if we change it to 97, it's 38.66. So the actual extra lie required changes, and also the lie here changes. And you can see here 97% purity. So this is why it's really important to adjust um, how much if we change to 98, 375. 371 and you can see that's a big jump of lie so 371 versus 379 so that's like nine grams difference so that's why it's really important to be able to put in your lie concentration and i can't stress that enough um so yeah so that's just roughly how and of course the full recipe will be um, available in the description as usual but just to give a quick run through as how easy it is to uh know how much citric acid is required and how much extra is required and of course if you're doing two percent which if you're going to do, be doing for body i suggest two percent so you're just going to need the 40 grams plus the 25.25 and of course if you want to do one you can but I always stick with two for body and three for cleaning. Right, so I thought I'll just cover a couple of things before we uh, head on over to preparing the low water and uh, everything else. Um, here where it says anhydrous, all that means is that it's water soluble. And of course, um, as you'll see in the next step, the citric acid that I use dissolves very easily in the water. 
So most citric acid is anhydrous on the mark. I'd say like definitely over 90%. Uh, but always check the label. Um, if it's monohydrate, don't get it. If it's anhydrous, then definitely get it. Um, because then it will just um, dissolve in the water and it's really easy to use. Um, I thought here it actually says something about DOS. But anyway, I know other light calculators have touched base on citric acid and, um, and preventing DOS. And also from my research online as well. Um, and other soap makers I know too, particularly some of them being on the soap makers lounge. Uh, they said that when having issues with DOS, with certain recipes after adding uh, citric acid powder or citric acid to their uh, their soap recipe it has prevented um, DOS from reforming so that's, that's really really good information to kind of uh, gather around the place like whether that's researching online or from other soap makers so if you're definitely having DOS issues consider adding citric acid into your soap recipe because it will actually prevent it from happening or greatly reduce it from happening um, it's just a very inexpensive input so if you are definitely having issues with uh, DOS issues definitely add citric acid as well as soap scum of course as we've been talking uh, definitely add citric acid to combat soap scum issues uh, and also I'd like to point out another thing lastly um, if you do have hard water having uh, citric acid in your soap recipe actually makes it last longer and the reason why is the hard water doesn't turn your soap mushy between uses so your soap will remain as hard as possible between uses even when water is introduced to it because it's not reacting with the you know the minerals and the heavy metals in the actual water so um, it will actually last between uses so it's not absorbing that water and being mushy on the surface so adding citric acid will extend the use you will get out of your bar and also it'll increase the lather so it's just like if you have really high super fat uh, in soaps not coconut oil soaps like 100 percent coconut oil it can hinder lather like having a lot of uh, free fatty butters and stuff like shea butter and cocoa butter with a really high super fat like you know 10 percent and above um, can actually hinder uh, lather or even if it's that five percent super fat and you have like a lot of cocoa butter like you know 20 or 30 percent and not enough coconut oil it can actually you know hinder the lather as well so it can actually do the same thing with hard water it uh, just kind of reacts and attaches itself to the excess you know minerals in the water and it won't lather up as well so you'll find adding, adding um, citric acid will greatly increase your lather if you do have hard water if you don't have hard water then it won't make any difference but if you do have hard water definitely um, you will notice a difference in uh, the way it lathers and I will point out one thing uh, as I started to add citric acid into my dish and laundry bars 100% coconut oil which is actually this recipe um, I noticed when I'm actually lathering it up and like uh, cleaning the dishes and especially clear stuff like cups I noticed that the lather was really white like the bubbles were whiter than usual and that's a big thanks to the citric acid you know turning into sodium citrate um and yeah so like it's just you can see that the lava and the way it cleans is just so much it just it's a lot cleaner it's not reacting to the stuff that's present in the tap water so citric acid here makes sodium citrate here you can buy sodium citrate already already made it's tends to, it's still uh, you know it's still inexpensive um i know a kilo here is about 30 dollars um and that's one kilo whereas you know five kilos is 35 dollars of citric acid so i mean you can buy citric the sodium citrate but i mean just use citric acid i mean it's generally very inexpensive but if you want to add sodium citrate i don't have actual experience with sodium citrate like in its raw form 
I don't see why you can't dissolve it in your water before adding the lye because there's no the reaction won't occur. Sodium citrate, I believe, doesn't react with sodium hydroxide. So it should not react and it shouldn't increase heat or anything like that. So it might work. But from what I've been reading, people dissolve, you know, sodium citrate in a bit of water and then they add a, a trace. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I have no experience with this, so I can't really comment on it. But the sodium citrate here actually says it does increase the shelf life. So it might not say that for the citric acid, but for the sodium citrate, it definitely does say it. So, But you're getting sodium citrate anyway when you use citric acid. So I thought just to point that out. All right, so we are back and I'm going to weigh everything out. So this is going to be the lye water um, pot. And because um, I've, you know, you've seen me probably use those Pyrex glass um, jugs in the past for the lye water, but I've um, recently changed to just to use all stainless steel. Um, two reasons, because over time it can kind of etch and uh, crack like uh, slowly, like with adding the caustic soda repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. And um, I, nothing's ever broken on me, but just on the safe side, I switched to stainless steel. And also the citric acid creates a considerable amount of heat. It's not unusual for the water to go up to 80 or 90 degrees Celsius, um, especially because we um, I add sugar. You don't have to add sugar. I mean, it's a completely optional additive, but even just with the citric acid, it will definitely climb upwards of 70 degrees Celsius, even if you, you know, kind of do it really slow. It doesn't really matter when the citric acid and the lye um, create the reaction to create sodium citrate. It, um, it's an exothermic reaction, uh, so it will generate um, a considerable, considerable amount of heat. So we're doing a two kilo batch as stated before. So. 25% oil, water to oil ratio is 500 grams of water. So we're out of 500 grams. Five oh seven. That's okay. If it's a little bit over, it's not going to be a big deal, considering it's a massive water discount already. Citric acid, so we need 60 grams because we're doing 3%. So 60 grams of the citric acid. So go ahead and add that. And with the citric acid, just add slowly. It's something that you don't want to go overboard because um, it will create a super fat. And specifically for these bars, we want a 0%. So we want to make sure that it's exactly 60. And of course, we're going to add the sugar at also, we're going to actually do 2%. I usually do 3%. But I'm going to do 2% because of the heat, so we'll see um, if it uh, generates enough heat to scorch the um, sugar. Even if it scorches, it's fine. The soap will return to neutral colour after a few days, so it's totally fine. It's not going to ruin anything. But just for curiosity's sake, because it is 3%, it generates more heat um, than 2% citric acid, so we'll see. We'll just we'll do 2%, so we'll do 40 grams of raw sugar get 40 yep. 40 grams so just going to make sure that it's mixed in very well everything is dissolved particularly the citric acid Okay, so that's all dissolved nicely, so we'll put that aside. 
Now we're going to weigh out our coconut oil and a sodium lactate and get everything else weighed out, including the lye. And I'm going to take you outside with me um, with the camera, so hopefully I'll find a good place to put it um, so you can see the reaction that will happen. It might bubble a little bit, so it's really important to um, leave a considerable distance between yourself and the light pot and also to wear correct PPE. I recommend doing it outside and adding it slowly. Don't just dump it in. Usually I just dump the lye in, but with citric acid, we've got to take extra, extra precaution so it doesn't um, bubble up out of the pot and it can volcano. So it's really important to um, do it slowly. Right, so the it's so humid here today that you see the lye stick to the, the glass, the glass Pyrex. Anyway, I'll put this aside. This will begin to clear up. Just um, got a little bit golden from the sugar, which is totally normal, but it'll clear up. And just to show you, it's 86 degrees Celsius. Because of the big water discount I use, plus the sugar, so there's a lot of heat generated. So I thought um, I'll cover just um, quickly while the coconut oil melts behind me. Um, as I was, you know, um, slowly pouring the lye in, it did crackle. You can hear some crackling sound and a little bit of bubbling, which is normal because of the citric acid. So if that happens, that's okay. That's totally normal. And then we're going to mix everything up. I am adding them. I like the dish bars to be in these molds. They're beautiful. Um, and then nice and big, you just, you know, rub the spudge on or whatever you're using to clean. And it's um, really easy to use and it lasts an incredibly long time. Um, so, yeah, anyway, I'm going to step away, let everything melt down slowly. And um, I guess I'll see you soon. <laughs> 